live from Hollywood, California. With me, you know him as Dental Boy, the one and only czar of the virtual background, Omar Zini, known as Pro GK Academy. How's the dentist time, dude? It's good. I mean, I think if you would have given me that title, I would have called you to change it. But Dental Boy, is, <laughs> it's like a weird superhero. But hey, you know what? I'll take it. It, it is what it is. It, it, yeah, it actually sounds like it sounds like the superhero. Like, like, I don't know if you guys ever saw that movie. Um, God, I forgot what it was called, but it was like just like these all- they were like wannabe superheroes. Oh my gosh. It was in uh, the Incredibles in the or something. I don't know. No, 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 no. It was like, it was like in the nineties yeah, yeah. and like, move on. Dan- yeah. Anyway. All right. yeah. <laughs> we're live on Facebook. Whatever. Anyway, 99 world cup winner, Suskia Weber, uh, as we all know, who's getting ready for her second game. Shout out to, to Lauren who had go- pac 12 goalkeeper of the week. That Absolutely. is phenomenal, phenomenal. And, uh, we're getting through those real quickly guys. Cause our, our next guest, this is honestly a treat. Um, if you guys uh, are not familiar with the Seattle Sounders, um, you're at, you've been living in a cave because it's one of the most iconic franchises in MLS history. And this guy is literally Tom Dutra could probably be the mascot of the Seattle Sounders by this point. Like I, no one knows the Seattle Sounders better than the goalkeeper coach for the Seattle Sounders, the one and only Tommy Dutra. Tommy, this is honestly this is an honor, man. I mean, the, the, the level of goalkeepers you have been able to work with through the Seattle Sounders um, is just absolutely incredible. Absolutely phenomenal. Well, thank you very much for having me on the show. I've been so fortunate to work with so many good guys that, uh, and so lucky to be part of the club for so many years. Yeah. I mean, I mean, look, I mean, like one of the things is, is that that's really crazy about it is like, first off, your guys' fans are absolutely insane. And, and honestly, the club just from head to toe from like comms to like the coaching staff to the players and everything is just absolutely first rate. I mean, they even spent the time to do a 25 minute uh, YouTube piece on you hosted oh. by Keith, Keith Costigan, which I was like, well, I'm no Keith Costigan. So I don't know how this is going to go, but like, my God, man. I mean, I was like, it's like, yeah, that might be the only franchise who put that much effort into their goalkeeper coach. That's how we know you're a legend, Tom. No, I'm not a legend by any means, but that uh, we have, we've got a great department that likes to maybe uh, help us out from time to time and make us feel good, I guess. <laughs> oh, no, definitely a legend. And uh, again, sorry for the noise in the background. <laughs> <laughs> I don't hear any. I don't hear any noise. Omar, do you hear any noise? I do. Just mute it. <laughs> okay. okay, bye. <laughs> All right. is just going to just just going to every leave. time um, I go live. Here we go. <laughs> Now, kind of before before we kind of get into today's topic, guys, which is going to be kind of like reversing uh, direction and changing momentum and all of that sort of thing. Uh, Tom, for some people out there who kind of might not be familiar with your role at Sounders and honestly why we've been kind of joking around about the fact that you are kind of, you know, uh, should be on the logo. Like, I think the next like like sponsor should just be a face of you uh, because you are Mr. Sounder. Um, why don't you talk a little bit about uh, kind of how this all came to be? Yeah, I mean, luck and timing, I think, had a lot to do with it. Um, when I got done playing, I, I really had no interest in coaching at all. Um, and then just slowly but surely, I started to get involved in coaching. And, and obviously, goalkeeping is my passion. Um, and then one thing led to another where I was working with either with Olympic Development Program goalkeepers, youth national team goalkeepers, those types of things, the ones that were here locally. And then I started getting some interviews but I wasn't ready for them. I wasn't ready to move on. Um, just wasn't, I, there was no chance I was going to be able to do what I'm doing now back then. And the Sounders, the club I played for, and then uh, they had made some coaching changes in the USL days and they didn't offer me much, but I <laughs> wanted to take the opportunity to try to, you know, test myself a little bit. Um, and then one thing just, you know, like I said, led to another, and I was been fortunate enough to be here as long as I have. And, um, with the help of a lot of good goalkeepers I work with, either the young ones all the way up. And honestly, I tell people this all the time. Had it not been that I coached at a small D3 school, I don't think I'd be coaching now. And the reason being is, is that I went there with just a just coach, and I came from a pro background. And then I, about two weeks later, I came over to my wife and said, this is the greatest experience I've had because I'm working with players that and they're not going to be pros, but they were giving me everything like pros. And I was like, okay – this is something now. And people are surprised when I say that, but that, that was probably the best experience I had or the one of the reasons I got into coaching was a lot of those goal or those players I worked with because I was working with the outfield players. And then just some of the youth goalkeepers I was working with, I was like, this is kind of, this is, this has been fun. It's, it's kind of cool. And then it just took it from, took off from there. 
Yeah, you know, Tom, it's funny because it's a similar similar story to me too. When I was done, I didn't want anything to do with it. Like, like I walked away, I walked away. Like I was yeah. like, you know, and um, I came back in like doing some privates here and there and then coaching a small, small club and just the, the young goalkeepers in the club and, and it, it like kind of found a way to reignite that passion. Like it was like, oh, this is, this is awesome. This is fun. And just those connections and everything I had and then, you know, jump into UCLA and everything. But it, it was like, you know, had I not had that experience, I don't know if I would have, you know, I had interviews when like right after I finished and, and people wanted me to head coach or coach here or coach there and actually, you know, got called for UCLA probably about 15 years ago and I wasn't ready for it, you know? And so yeah. like, it's so understand and similar path. 100 yeah, yeah. Th that, that's why she sent me on that interview and i i, I failed it with flying <laughs> colors <laughs> well i think omar was like 10 so <laughs> <laughs> yeah omar omar, omar was it was it a, was it a similar thing for you for um <laughs> after after your stellar pro career did you just say you know what i'm just i'm hanging up the glove i'm hanging up the gloves now but then uh then you got pulled into that social media world and you said oh you know what now i got a coach no i think uh for me it was i, I put so much into it uh, when I was trying to play pro, not trying to get to pro, uh, the pro level. And then I was just so exhausted by that point, just mentally and physically, just every single season. That's why I, you know, I give so much credit to like LeBron and, and Tom Brady, those guys who are doing it for so long is having to go through that preseason every single year is ridiculous. And then having to eat the same way every single day, work out every day. So to those guys credit, but for me, I got to a point where I was burnt out, it took like two or three years off from just goalkeeping in general, still watch games and all that. Then little by little, I realized, man, okay, I still have a passion for it, but how can I come at this from a different angle that's like a fresh perspective? And all that same love that I had early on, it kind of just was reshaped into uh, to what I'm doing now. So yeah, I would say so if you're going to get into coaching, maybe take a year or two off to see if maybe it's for you. And then once you kind of have that hunger, go back to it. You know, it, it, it's really funny because like for me, I kind of always knew that I was going to get into coaching, uh, mainly because like I sat on a lot of benches and I was like, oh, you know what? I'm pretty sure I know how this works. Not as can, many as me. <laughs> yeah, but the bench you you sat on some really cushy benches though. Yeah. <laughs> you had a better view. You had yeah, you had a better view. Mike's in Ventura County playing on dirt and grass. You're playing in the you're, you're in the Rose Bowl. I mean, it's uh, different views. That's a, I, you know, I, you know, I don't, I don't know. I don't know how the benches were at, uh, at like the riverboat gamblers or anything like that. Uh, that was the name of the team, right? New Orleans, right? The yeah. Gamblers? A couple of years there was, and then they changed it in the old A league. They changed it to the storm. And it's kind of funny. Cause I bring that up every once in a while. I was bringing that up to actually to Marcus Hanneman the other day. And I said, you will not believe one of these teams. That, and I've known him forever. And we were talking about different team names and cause we played okay, together. In the old, yeah. We played in the old riverboat gamblers. Yeah. <laughs> Is that crazy? What was the, like? What was the mascot? <laughs> I was gonna say. You know, it was, I think it was a big stern wheel. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't like some drunk guy, like, no, like no. at the table. No, that was some of our players. <laughs> <laughs> it's, so funny, it's so funny you say that, Tom, because like I'm thinking about like that the old A League and the Usisl and stuff like that. And, like, yeah. how many of those mascots, those caricatures, oh, would not fly in 2021 at all? I'm like, oh boy, <laughs> uh, no, chance. no chance. I mean, even with the old Sounders, you have to understand we had an orca. I mean, like that's something we're trying to save right now here in our page and everything else. We got this orca running around the field, and it's like it's, you know 90 degrees out. I'm like, no, well, I mean, this is kind of weird. Oh my God, that's a, that's incredible! You really, literally have like free willy uh, yeah. going on. Right? Yeah. Yeah. You're right getting there. like you're getting like boycotted. Oh, that's, exactly. that's uh that that's amazing. But it's it's funny you brought up Marcus Hahnemann, and uh, obviously you know you were talking about you know Omar, you were talking about like I don't know you know shout out to guys like Brady and LeBron and stuff like that. Shout out guys like you know Casey and Marcus, you know who kind of ended their careers in Seattle. Um, you know, and, and who had illustrious careers in Europe came back and, and I'm sure, you know, Tom, for you, for the younger guys, you know, when, when they were coming through uh, the league and they saw guys like Casey and Marcus and, and the work that work ethic that they had, you know, putting in, um, I'm sure it showed them, you know, Oh, that's, that's what it takes to have that type of longevity. Yeah. I mean, we've been, we've been very fortunate at the club to have just a strong culture of, of goalkeepers and work ethic. I mean, We've had guys that, you know, Mark, I mean, obviously Michael was spurning that came over and played, oh, yeah. you know, and then we had, you know, uh, God, we've had so many different guys um, other than their career. And, 
you know, just to come in and, but from top to bottom, that standard's always been set from the number one guy. Uh, but also having a number one guy saying, look, looking at the number four guy, you're not beating me out today. Yeah. That's the one thing I can say about Casey, you know, that's the one thing he came in and, and he missed in three years. I had him, he missed three sessions. So, you know, it, that, that's unbelievable. And we trained hard. I mean, that's not like where we weren't trained. People we were like, Oh, did you take, no, we trained. And I think he would, he, he was really like, yeah, if I'm here, I'm training, I'm playing. Don't, don't worry about me. And I'm like, okay, let's go. Um, and Mark is coming back as a, you know, backup to two different goalkeepers, so much love for the club, uh, worked hard every day, just wanted, it was like, it was crazy. He just wanted his opportunity, like as if he was 20 years old again for the club. And so we've, you know, we've had so many good young ones that, yeah, that were able to learn from those older guys. And, uh, you know, now with Fry, obviously setting the standard for everybody and at the club now, and it's been very easy for me because it's now it's, they know what is expected of them uh, because the, the, because the goalkeepers have come before them. Um, yeah, I mean, question. I always think it's good oh. to have an like to have an older goalkeeper in that situation, in those situations, because there's just a, such a difference. There's just such a calmness and just an understanding of the game more. You get these young guys that are coming up and they think if they fly around, work hard, like like you know, bust it, ah, like that, that, that's all that it takes. But it's it's just a pure understanding of the game, how to simplify the game, how to. Um, how to save your body at the same time as you train hard, to be honest with you. Like you can work as hard as you can possibly work, but you could do it smart. And as you get older, you have to do that. Oh, you yeah, stop. I, Sorry, Omar. <laughs> no, no, I was just going to ask. I think Tom, you have the only, you have the, uh, the only guy in, in the league who still doesn't do side volleys. You have, uh, you know, Stephen Fry doing the, the, the half volley. Has it been, uh, has you guys, have you ever had that conversation of like, Hey, maybe we try something volleyer. new. Hey, no, so but was I, by the way. The I was a half I was too. I think we, yeah, we're, we're the old school, you know. I'd... Oh, I'm I'm terrible at the half volley. I can side volley all day, but I could not. Yeah. Do that. Oh, God, no. I was oh, a half oh. volley. Actually, oh. in the last two years, and this, I, I have to give another uh, senior guy we had on our team for one year was Troy Perkins, who also played on the national team as well and um, played first one year. And him and I would talk about all this. He was, are you going to work on a sidewinder with him at all? I'm like, listen. I will, but we're working on so many other things. And he was, he, Troy was awesome. And, and the last couple of years, Steph is actually now starting to hit that. And I'm trying to get his half volley back out again, like late in games, put it in, you know, put it in the corner. Cause he, he can hit it unbelievably right. well, but now he's starting to hit, you know, now he feels so comfortable hitting, you know, a sidewinder and whatnot. So, um, but he's, he's, it's funny. He's, he works on it a lot. <laughs> Omar's like, okay, well, now I've got my next video. No, perfect what you're good at. <laughs> uh, I mean, dude, he's, I mean, he, I say he's perfect what you're good at, but he's so good at it and it's so dangerous. And that ball on a counter attack, it just like drops, that man. That was mine. Man, it, it's dangerous too. Cause if you're the other goalkeeper, I mean, like, you know, Nick Ulrich for uh, one of our mutual friends, yeah. he played at UC yeah. Riverside. I played at Davis and one year we played against them. And I remember, forget it. He hits it like the meanest drop kick, probably like 70 yards. And he just kept hitting it over and over. And it's a nightmare because if that falls right between me and my center back, now it's like, okay, am I going? Are you going? And we actually didn't make the playoffs. That but it's one also year got a back hit one over on the top. It, so it dies. It does. Yeah, it, it does. Got, it, That's what I'm so saying. Like it, as, as much mm -hmm. as you can add to your, to your toolbox, but I think it's, you know, nowadays for me, it was more my hamstring getting sore with the, the drop kicks. <laughs> now it's my, my hips. And I think that's where I'm probably going to call it soon. I, I mean, I do some side volleys in training and I'm like, what am I doing? Why? Like, that's it. I'm, I'm, I'm done now. I'm done trying to look cool. We used to do that with actually with Oba Femi Martins. That was actually a thing where we said, if he gets it, go, just go. And Oba can run by everybody, mm -hmm. you know, and he was so good. And, and, uh, but the last couple of years, we just, we've, we've transformed a little bit as a, as a club. And I would say last three to four years, we're just, we're just different now. Uh, yeah. But yeah, no, I agree. It's a, it's a weapon. Heck yeah. You know, I feel like we have to, we're going to have to do a whole episode on my gosh, on the, the old school drop kick and, and why, why it's, it's not why it's that old school. <laughs> okay. Well, I'm calling, I'm calling it old school. I'm calling it old school it because is, there's not 17 social so media effective. influencers doing drop kick videos. They're doing sidewinder videos. So that's why I'm calling it old school. Yeah. But, and not but, doing them well. <laughs> that's, <laughs> <Sorry. yeah. laughs> that's another story. That's another episode. Um, <laughs> 
by the way, shout out to Michael Sperning. Uh, apologize, I did not include you in that in that group of of goalkeepers. I meant because those guys were kind of at the tail end of their career. And Michael, you still had tons of life left in your career, and that's why I did not include you uh, in 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 that group of uh, goalkeepers. He was fantastic for us. Yeah. Oh man, what a good dude. Um, let's uh, let's hop into this topic, guys. If uh, if this is a not the best of my transitions, so I'm not the transition king today, Omar. Um, but uh, but figured we might as well do it. Um, so today's topic, guys, is uh, reversing direction and changing momentum um kind of what you know what what we're referring to is obviously you know shot us at one direction you've got to make that recovery movement so maybe tom for maybe some of the parents out there who are listening or younger goalkeepers who aren't kind of familiar with the terms what do you think of when we meet when i say reverse direction yeah and i've you know I, I, we changed i apologize i would have had some video for you but we changed out uh, all of our our data and everything this year we and so I don't have, I can't bring any of that up, but the change in direction is, is just being able to deaccelerate and accelerate to the opposite side of the goal. And how do you do that? And how do you accomplish that? And is that a, you know, I get this asked all the time. I know you guys do too. Is, is that, you know, a crossover step? Is that a lateral movement? Uh, you know, for us being Americans, I always use it as, look, I, I mean, you guys watch basketball, a point guard, good first step. Defensive back, good first step. A goalkeeper, good first step. And so how are we going to accomplish some of those things? I think we have to make sure we, you know, create a good lateral movement as well as a good crossover movement. Unwaiting and waiting. No, 100% agree. And you said, uh, you know, accelerate, decelerate. Like that movement has to come. There's there's so much involved with that uh, change of direction. And whether, you know, depending, you know, don't fall the ball line, like, you know, you know, you have to, sometimes you have to arc and come up depending on your angles. You have to make sure your head, you're not following the ball. Your head is getting to the kind of where the ball is going to end up before your body's getting there. So if it's a first time strike, you can get yourself set and see the body position of the player that's going to hit the ball. Um, it's not just getting from one point to the other. There's a lot involved and it sounds complicated, but I mean, it, it, it's a repetition kind of training thing. And like, I think we see a lot with young kids. Number one, I think I, you see that they get drawn out of their goal and they follow the ball. So now they're totally out of position. So their ankle's totally off. If I had a whiteboard, I'd show it to you. Yeah. Um, or, um, or they're, 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 they're not getting their eyes to the ball to the end point of the ball on time. So by the time they're getting across, that ball's getting struck, they're still moving. So, you know, there's a lot that goes into that that change of direction. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Saskia, I think to Saskia, your point right there, I think that's what we talked about how, you know, some kids, they take things so literal. And when you tell, when you tell them something, it's like, yo, you know, track the ball and get into position. They overcorrect sometimes. And when they overcorrect, that causes so much, you know, um, I guess, uh, an impact in, in uh, spatial awareness of moving too closely mm-hmm. to your post. And I think I actually just posted a story on one of my, on my pro GK podcast channel. And it was Neuer getting a ball from, it was uh, on top of the D on the 18 play to his right side and he shifted over, but didn't overcommit, stayed neutral, trusted his positioning. And when the ball got hit back across him, he was in a good position to attack that ball line and extend. So I think when you watch those kind of players, we talk about all the time, like, yeah, you're not going to be Neuer who's six foot five or six foot four, however tall he is and have that reach. But at the same time, like if you can find your optimal set position as you're coming across the goal, so you don't have that reverse uh, be so difficult and more right. smooth that first movement's got to be smooth as well with the, we talk about being a pessimist or being somebody who thinks in the future, just understand that if that ball does go far post, you got to put yourself in a position to steady yourself and then go back across. And I always love the literalness of, okay, like, why don't we try a crossover step here? And then it's like this, the kids just crossover, crossover, crossover. And you're just sitting there just like, okay, you're being too literal. And so a lot of times I'm like, just get, be an athlete, just get, get from there to there. How would you do it? If I wasn't giving you any direction or anything like that, if I told you to turn and run from that post to that post, just go, you know, and gather up your body and and slow yourself down. Because what I think a lot of players don't, young players don't realize, you have to control your body. You have to slow yourself down. It's not just, you know, running from one spot to the other at same speed. It's like acceleration, deceleration, because you have to deal with what's going to come when that ball hits its point. 
Um, and you know, you get kids, oh, I'm going to cross over here. I'm going to do this. I'm just going to, you know, and just like, I try to tell them, just be an athlete. How would you just go from one point to this right. point? You right. know, like it's like the, the kid, the, the quintessential kid that shuffles <laughs> like 15 yards. Like, okay, I know we're working on footwork, but who would ever shuffle 15 yards? Yeah. But they're so literal. But, but, but in my opinion, Tom, a lot of that has to do with the fact, and, and you know, we've, we've discussed this before on the podcast, and you just brought up you know, about different sports and everything like that. Is it, because a lot of kids nowadays don't cross-train whatsoever, they, they don't work on those different, those, those different movements and stuff like that. So we get what I, what I kind of call camp culture, you know, mm-hmm. where, where kids know how to do pat- patterns. They can move in patterns, and that, mm-hmm. they don't know how to improvise. They don't know how to think logically about just it moving their body, you know? And uh, I think it was, I forgot which, uh, which club it was uh, in, in the premiership, but at their youth Academy, they actually just started just having a, a, creating a jungle gym just so kids would just learn how to be able to move and fall and, and do all sorts God. of unorthodox movements because I they were finding the they don't do gym. that anymore. Well, wow, that's a, I think that's a great point too. It's like, I, I can't tell you how many times I go out to training sessions and the meat of the training session is ladder work. Like, I mean, I don't think anybody's put a ladder there and had me move through a ladder during a game. But yet the meat of the session is 25 minutes of ladder work, which is very important. And I have our goalkeepers do it, but just not on the field. But I have that luxury. I have them in a gym doing some right. of that stuff, minimal contact work. But sometimes I, I, I sit there and I go, I mean, that's just not practical. And I think that's, you said it best. How would you get there? You tell me. You know, how would you get there? Because I have so many, and I know you guys too, it's like I have goalkeepers from all different shapes and sizes. I'm, when we're talking at the pro level. So I can't expect you to move the same way as this guy, all Right. this guy. Now, technically we're all going to come together and we're going to look the same or mm-hmm. a lot of parts, but I think you said it best. How are you going to get there? And let's go. You yeah, know? let's see it. Let's, let's see your athleticism. How are you going to get there? Now, the final step or the final two steps into a set position or something that is what we're gonna focus on. But how are you gonna get from point A to point B into that set position? And let's see it and let's work with, I agree with you, each individual's athletic ability. I, mean, I, I, will, I will tell you this, like, you know, and, and Omar, I know you've had this issue as well, too. When I inherit a, a goalkeeper in a, in a private setting or something like that, they'll do something, they'll ask me, they're like, what type of footwork do you want me to do? <laughs> And it's like, like, what do you mean? What type of like, it's like, it's like, well, do you want me to cross over? Do you want me to shuffle? Do you want me to sprint? Cause like my coach likes me to cross over step here. And I'm like, do you, do you, do you, dude, you do what's going to be effective for the moment. There is no such, you know, and, and I, I think Omar, that's something that we really need to start to striving to, to younger coaches out there is don't start giving, you know, verbatims of what you want your goalkeepers to do from a technical standpoint, because then they're never going to learn how to properly utilize their body. Yeah. And I think that's why the usage of video is so important. Like a lot of people don't understand what their body's capable of or what's actually happening and what's causing them not to be able to get to the ball. And we talk about it too. You know, if you come across the goal, sometimes you have to sweep your leg to, you know, create that space. If you're coming across for, Oh, he froze. You just, you just, you just, you just froze. We just, fro- de- you just the froze. Dentist. Yeah. The oh. dentist froze you. Am I good now? Yeah, yeah you're good now. <laughs> am I, am I good now? Yeah. Um, no, but yeah, you're right, Mike. I think just to, to get to that point, I think that's, it's, it's, it's important to let the goalkeepers figure it out. And, and I did a lot of stuff growing up, a lot of shots and, you know, figuring out, figuring it out on my own. One of my club uh, coaches, he had something called shooting clinic and we'd get like two of those sessions a week and we'd be like a hundred shots. And out of the hundred shots, I probably may have saved like 10 or 15, but I had like 85 opportunities to figure out, oh, this opportunity uh, was a chance for me to sweep my leg instead of trying to go down with my foot. Okay, maybe next time I go down with my hand instead. Maybe I need to slow my body down. So how you figure out all these different things. And I think nowadays in the, you say the camp culture, Mike, or even doing private sessions, a lot of times we're giving these kids and feeding them the answers. And I think they're not allowing themselves to think freely. So mm-hmm. now, like you said, they're trying to memorize steps. And when yeah. they get to the game, it's like, well, if I'm memorizing, we talk about it, formulas and equations. I used to do this in math class. I'd be like, okay, that's on the practice test. I got to memorize that. And that, that exact question didn't come up on the test. And I was like, man, I am screwed. I hope the person next to me studied. That's just how, that's just how it came at some points, you know? So I just think that's where it comes down to is they're going to fail, but it's best for them to fail in a controlled setting so that when they get to the game, they're not uh, in over their head. Yeah. No, I mean, that, 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 go ahead, Tom. No, I agree with that. No, that's a, it's, it's, it's a good point. And I think that, you know, getting into positions and making sure we're set prior to the shot and, 
um, and just doing it over and over again. And I think that's, that's the key. And I think, again, get there, get to that position and then we'll work on the next mm -hmm. step or two. I think, I, I think, think, I, I think the biggest uh, thing I find with e even at like the college level and stuff, it's training that transition across the goal, yep. um, is, is really the angle and, and, and where that ball is going to arrive and what, what ball line are you taking? And, um, you know, I find more than any, and like, I, I'm just, I, I will just keep reiterating, just get there. Mm -hmm. But um, how, like, what angle are you going to get there on? And when I say that you, sometimes you have to arc it, you know, sometimes you have to come into, the, come into the goal and up so that you're, you're cutting off that angle. If you're coming straight on a ball line, that entire angle, the ball's going to beat you technically to, the, to that player. The ball is going to move faster than you. So if you're coming on that ball line, young kids out there, you're leaving so much of the near post and the goal open. But if, if, if it's crossing the entire um, part of the box to the opposite side of the six or the 12, if you arc that, now you're coming up and you're closing that near post angle, but not too far near post. You still have the ability to go far post and stuff. So I find that that's more of what um, I'm trying to break down and retrain in kids because if, if any kid gets drawn, oh, here goes the ball, I'm going to go, you know, and stuff like that. And that's not the angle you need to take. But, but I think you just brought up a really good point, Saskia. And by the way, Tom, this, I, I, for people, I'm going to break the fourth wall right here. Uh, we were have, uh, vis visually, the lighting in, uh, in the other room was not as, as strong. Now you're glowing. You're glowing. That's what, that's what happens when you got It looks two really kids. nice back behind you. <laughs> yeah, that's when you got two, <laughs> two kids that are on, doing online school. And I have a wife that's working from home. I've got a <laughs> space that now I've moved out here. So I was like, I'm, I'm not finding the light anymore. <laughs> <laughs> it looks good. Oh my gosh. We had, we had the war situation once where we had a, uh, we had actually a, a pro coach on and he was actually um, at the, uh, at the office and they had like sequestered him into like this tiny little room with like terrible Wi-Fi and everything like that. And it was just like coming in and out or whatever. And I was like, of course they're going to do that to the goalkeeper coach. They're just going to throw the goalkeeper <laughs> coach. In the corner. Tiny little, uh, some tiny little room. They're like, they don't need good Wi-Fi. They'll figure it out. They do hand gestures. In we the lost anyway. Mike. <laughs> Did you lose me? Uh, no. I'm just no, kidding. <laughs> oh, oh, okay. So Mike, oh, yeah. Mike, I just want to add on to that topic. I think um, Sask in the transition moments, I think uh, I was doing a recession recently on, on transition in and out of possession. And we had one person on the right side, one person on the left side, and you're swinging the ball across. And at any moment I can, I'm standing on the 18 and they can play that ball to me. So if you check to that pass, they may give it to you or they may score it across. So I think in those moments, a lot of times I realized with the younger goalkeepers that their transition moment is so slow because they're matching the speed of the ball. Exactly. And then once they, and then once they get to their spot, by that, by that point, in my opinion, they're already delayed and behind. So they're not even able to find their proper ball line because now they're worrying about the shot and then finding the line. So I always tell them like, beat the ball there if you can at the best if you way, can. if it's, yeah, if you can. So get there as quickly as you can. I say fast approach and then slow arrival so you can slow your body down. So just in case it goes back across or even if they take a touch, then you maybe reposition just a little bit right. more versus you're getting there a second late. And then as they're striking, you're trying to add, you know, add all these little uh, variables but, up. But that's what I mean by your head and your eyes have to go before your body before your body so like that ball gets struck and if you're following ball line if you're following the ball as you're moving if that ball hits a point and you one time that whether it's back to another person or into the goal i'm already behind right but if i'm here and my eyes and everything my peripheral is going to technically where that ball is going to end then even if my body is like a split second behind i can still say okay they're in they're the I can see their body position. And guys, this is like, I'm saying this in slow motion, but this is like, this is like Full hyper, speed. like quick. Yeah. But if I see, oh, somebody's in striking, but I can set. And like, I've always told you, it's better to be setting out of position than moving. So it's like, you're still giving yourself a chance, but yeah. you get a lot of kids that number one, they're like, I got to get all the way over. Right. So they're going to still move because, oh, you know, I got to cover my near post when I'd rather have you set like too far off your near post to give yourself a chance to react in your post, but also to go back the other direction. But yeah. I think that comes from your visual um, as well as your body. Yeah, and I think the different places too, like right, a cutback, a cutback, you get across, cutback, you can get there too soon, you know, and you want to slow yourself up so you have enough where your momentum does take you to that near post, we can still get a far post shot as well, either with a kick save or something. You know, I think a lot of times goalkeepers, they go through this transformation of trying to get to a position 
and then they get there too quick. And then now it's finding that common, that, that balance now where I can get in that position. And the big thing for me with all of our goalkeepers, and I know you guys see it as well, is sometimes we, I get the goalkeeper and I know they're nervous the first couple of weeks or whatever, but they're, they're very stiff. Yeah. You know, and I want to see a moving fluid, get there, get to that position. And then what I also start to talk about sometimes is, Hey, can I get your shoulders squared up in time? Can I get you squared up in time? The moment of impact, how can we get you scored up in time so you can make the best save possible? And, and I agree, if they get there too soon, then they're just like, they're like stuck in the mud yeah. in a sense. Yeah. You're just like, boom. And yeah. it's, it's the same it's the same thought process of setting too soon. It yeah. should be like a rhythm, like a boom, like a fluid motion that it's a timing, um, which takes a lot of repetition and a lot of understanding. But it's still like, if you're set too soon, if you're in a position too soon, you're, you're stuck in the mud. Like it's hard to move from that as well. Absolutely. Absolutely. Tom, Tom, Tom I, have a, I have a quick question for you because, you know, I'm just thinking about this in regards to from the, from, from the youth standpoint, I think multitasking is difficult to teach uh, to younger goalkeepers. I think, you know, it's, it's much easier to do just give a linear direction, one coaching point, they can figure that sort of out. However, when we're talking about something like this, it is multitasking, but because you have to move into that dangerous space yet at the same time, uh, you have to be following the flight of flight of the ball. So how, how would you kind of design a session in your opinion that that's going to be able to let those coaching points come out naturally? I think if for me too, it's, it also goes to if, once I set up the session is, how many is it enough? If we end up doing too many, it now are we, is it going to be a habit or are we just getting through the drill? And so sometimes for me, uh, is I, again, it was a great coaching point. Just get to that position and then let's work on it. So we'll always, we'll start with just lateral movement. I, I know it's, it's about as basic as you can get, but if I can get that lateral movement right and that first step right and that balancing point correct, then I can start working a crossover. And so I would start to answer your question. I would start off just really basic, just lateral movement. But again, a four to six ball set. Yeah. And then a four to six ball crossover set. And then we can start to build up to the more advanced of what we were just saying here. Because we're talking at a pro, for me, we're talking at a pro level when we're saying Absolutely. coming into yeah. that position, slowing down your momentum just in time of the moment of impact. That's more a pro level where, you know, I have the benefit of getting to watch my kids play finally, but they're goalkeepers and saying, gosh, if I were to give them advice and this, what would I, you know, give them? But to answer your question, that's how it started a set or a yeah. session. Yeah. No, no I'm, I'm glad, I'm glad you brought that up because Omar, I think, you know, that's one of the things that it's really difficult for you. I think, especially Omar, but the, with your social media presence and everything like that, because people are expecting you to give them, I don't want to say a show, but they're expecting you to, to give them something they haven't seen before. And if you post something like that, they start complaining and they go on like, Oh, I was already doing that. Like, why, what, what, what am I going to learn? What am I going to learn from this? You know, but all of us could pick it apart though. Right. All of us could pick it apart and mm -hmm. say, well, you're actually, your lead leg is not quite right. It's too far forward, too far back. Your set, your when you're, your set position, you're on, you're flat footed. You're on yeah. the heels. You're like, there's so much that goes into it. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's, there's so much that goes in. And as we're talking about building, we're, and, I, and I love footwork. I mean, that's, we all do, but I mean, that's the foundation of what we all do. Absolutely. Yeah. No. no, absolutely. I think that, um, it's hard because I, I agree with, I kind of agree with the question you asked Omar in a sense of it's just like, we, we keep coming back to that in the podcast of like, you know, these expectations of like, well, I know how to move laterally. I know how to do this. Like, let's, let's go to like the bigger mm -hmm. picture. But the bottom line is like, you're, you know, we're, we're talking with Tom right now for Seattle and yeah. we all do the basics because what we're teaching you is that this has to become second nature. We have to, to in order to move to the level of what we're talking about for what we would expect from pros or from elite um, college players, You've got to go, and they still do the basics. I still do lateral movement. I still work footwork across the goal. You have to, because this has to become something that's second nature. And um, that's why we constantly do it. You know, the, the, the big upper 90 saves and all that, they don't happen that often. But the footwork and getting there and just collecting a ball normally happens all the time. <laughs> so yeah, that's yeah. what we train. Yeah. It, 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 it's, it's funny because, you know, Saskia, with you, with you saying that right there, you know, and Tom and Omar, I don't know if you guys have had this situation in the past, you know, working with working with youth or anything. Tom, probably not because you're such a high level esteemed person and they just give you respect all automatically. But with no. me, parents will come up to me and they'll be like, oh, I, he's or 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 I'll have a DOC from a club when I'm working at a club or whatever. And they'll be like, 
hey, they already know that. Can you move on? Like, I, I, and I'm not kidding you. And I'm like, I'm literally like, you guys don't do ball work, ball mastery work with your U11s with the, but, the, but field, Omar with the talks outfield about players? That. But Omar talks about that all the time. That especially being a private trainer, that he it's that pressure that the kids got to be like throwing up at the end of practice because the parents mm -hmm. have to think that it was like really intense and hard and the kids throwing them. We talk about that. He talks about that all the time when they don't realize how if they go through these fundamentals in practice, that's actually more important than the other side of it. Such good Omar. Point. Yeah. <laughs> no, I mean, I, I've had to transition out of that from thinking that the session has to be this uh, amazing thing. And Mikey mid told me, he's like, Hey, how about you, you know, instead of trying to you know, do all the drills, why don't you have conversations? And I think testing those kids uh, with conversation and just being like, Hey, you know, I've sometimes I'll have a private and I'll film it on the iPad and I can show them on the bigger screen right after they've made that uh, error or they've made a decision. And I say, what do you think? And they're like, um, I don't know. I really don't know. What are you seeing? And I'm like, no, I'm asking you, what are you seeing? Like, there's no pressure. Just tell me what you think. And then finally they, they can dissect it freely. And then that's that breath of fresh air of like, Oh, okay. Now I can honestly be brutal and honest with myself. And that when I run these easy drills or easy sessions, you're getting just as much information on that as well. So you have to start with the basics. And I think the social media era again has caused a lot of kids to see the final picture and the final product. And we see, we talk about Stefan Fry too. I think Tom, I'm sure you can attest to this as well, but I've posted so many clips of uh, Stefan in terms of transition moments. I think he had, we guys lost unfortunately to Toronto, but he had a low ball save in the final. And I highlighted it because he was going one way and then he came across and it was, I think a bottom hand save with his left. And I just told everybody, I said, what do you guys see? And again, you know, social media, everyone has a different opinion, but I, oh, sorry. Someone just called me. I thought that was someone I who was, I thought someone was commenting on what you were saying right now. And you're like, oh, sorry, hold on. Actually, somebody <laughs> Give has me a, a second, I read opinion this. than what I'm saying But right yeah, now. no, I think, and again, like, you know, uh, with Stefan, I'm sure in practice and in, in training time, again, you can attest to this as well, that he's probably been beaten once or twice there or multiple times. And he's realized maybe I got, I got to correct this so that when it comes to the game, I'm not overcorrecting my positioning, but rather actually coming across, keeping my head steady, like Saf says, keeping my head steady. And then from there, I can go either back across myself or with my momentum. But I think that, I think in Tom, I think you can attest to this. I think what a lot of keepers, a lot of coaches and a lot of young kids out there don't realize is the work we're talking that goes into being able to do that. Mm -hmm. Like to, to, to get across the goal, to make a lower hand save, going back to the far post. There's so much like repetition of footwork and, um, and change of direction and understanding that that goes into being able to make that save. Yeah. And it's, it's, the save isn't by accident. The save is something that is practiced and worked on and it's worked on through fundamentals. Yeah. yeah well, this is the, the beauty of talking to people who know the position because you're <laughs> spot on, you know, you're spot on. It's like in, and Omar, you brought up that 17 final and I know exactly what you're talking about that save. And, you know, I mean, we were lucky to be in the game at halftime and then yellow and then in the game. And, and I, I know we train that all the time. You're, you're spot on about seeing it. And then, the, you know, everybody talks about the 16 final save. And I've said this over and over and people will attest. When he made that save, the save that everybody wants to talk about, I honestly, I was one of the few that I didn't get out of my seat. I was just like, I just looked back at our admin. And I said, we're going to win this game now. Mm -hmm. um, because I had seen that save in training, just not in that moment, you know, because Josie did so well to see him. It was like slow motion and him to head it and then see him cross over and, and get there. I've seen that in training. So I wasn't that excited, you know, I, I get more excited for, I get more excited for training sessions than I do games. <laughs> and everybody's up going crazy. And I'm just like, well, I think we're going to win the game now, you know, because yeah. we had no business of winning it at that point. But no, I'm um, going to, I'm going to just pat myself on the back right now really quick, but uh, in our, in our um, UCLA, in our uh, opener, like against Pepperdine, um, the momentum switched and the, the save that Lauren made to the far post coming across, um, like some people I think would break that down and say, maybe she was a little too far near post, but like, you don't see the bigger picture. I see yeah, that our, yeah. I see that Lucy had the inside of the, the attacker that was coming across. So she had shut down. Technically she had, the defender had closed the angle. So Lauren was fine and it gave her that opportunity to rechange dire to change direction and go back far post and kind of cheat a little bit more near post because the far post kind of was covered. If it right. went any, if it went on a different angle, it would have hit it would have hit Lucy. Like there's a bigger picture. Yeah. You know, and Absolutely. so 
it was a great save and it got the momentum back, but I'm just like, there's a lot more that goes into this, but that comes from everything we do. Right. Uh, Saskia, I love that your fact you brought that up because by the way, if anybody wants to see that it's, I think it's on the UCLA um, social media, <laughs> social media right now. Very proud. Um, and, uh, but, but it's one of those situations where if you don't, understand the position or you don't take the time to really break down the development of the play, you're going to pick it up. You're going to, you're going to dissect it. I don't want to say inappropriately, um, but you're going to, you're going to miss things or you're going to misidentify reasons for certain things. And, you know, and, and, and Tom, I think this is another thing too, in regards to reversing direction. Um, A lot of times people will say, Oh, that person's leaning too much this way or they're, or they're coming in this way or whatever, but they, they're, they're, they're so focused on the final action. They're not looking at the movement that the goalkeeper had to make prior based on the, based on the development of the play. No, absolutely. Uh, there's yeah, exactly. I mean, I think Omar said earlier too, is everybody's looking at that final product of everything, right? Whether it's a goal, whether it's a save. I mean, we, that's just the day and age we live in now. And, and there's so much more that goes into it. Um, look, we could sit there. I, I, I know when I look at Neuer, I'm like, he's, nobody's gonna be like him because he's so different you know he is so different he is so different the way he moves the way he does things but he's brilliant and so you look at him and you look at some others you're like how does he do it well that's what he does that's what works for him he's that good but that goes back to what we said in the beginning where i'm like okay get there like everybody's gonna do it differently i'm not gonna tell neuer oh, well, you should use a cross over here. Yeah. <laughs> Do this and that and the other. Like each, you know, just like I'm not going to tell like Idalia, I'm not going to tell Hannah, I'm not going to tell Lauren. Everybody's going to do it differently considering the goalkeeper that they are. And then but, you have to work on that. But but I, but like but Saskia, no, Omar, just before you do that real quick, like sure. Tom, how many, how many Neuers are we missing in this country because we're beating this out of them at uh, a young age? Well, I think you said it earlier, and I can't remember what you said, but it was perfect. It was almost like camp culture or something like that along those lines. And here's my biggest thing with goalkeepers is that you have to allow them to trust their instincts and not coach their instincts out of them. Oh, my God. Thank you. Yeah. So, (laughs) yeah. So I'm I'm super technical at what I do. I mean, what I do is super, super technical. Every, I mean, all my goalkeepers tell you I'm I'm detailed-oriented when it comes to the technique part. But you have to allow them to trust their instincts. And there's so many coaches, I believe, and, and at our level, I'm, I'm saying, and all the way down, that they coach the instincts out of the goalkeepers. And that's, you know, that used to be like we get used to get stuck on one goalkeeper has to look like this, one goalkeeper has to look like right. this. No, yeah, that's not true. You know, we have goalkeepers from all different backgrounds and everything else, and we have to allow them to grow by trusting their instincts. I, and, and that's like, I, oh my gosh, we're like kindred spirits. Um, <laughs> no, because the truth is, is I always tell, I always, tell, number one, go with your body, go with the flow of your body, you know, don't fight that. But, you know, it's the same thing as we always talk about, like, you know, you have kids that watch the Neuers or they watch the De Gea's or, you know, they watch, yeah. you know, whoever the Casey Murphy's I got to (laughs) throw my favorite female goalkeeper out there right now. Good luck, Casey. I hope camp's going great. Um, And I think that they try to emulate that and coaches, coaches that don't know goalkeeping try to say, Hey, be like this, or Hey, do a case save or Hey, do this. Um, And that's not conducive to that particular goalkeeper. And Yes, we're co- because coaches don't know, and they're coaching they're coaching their abilities out of them. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Absolutely, you Come have on. to be able to highlight what that goalkeeper is good at, and then move move from there. And like you know, what they're not good at, that's your time. That's your technical side. That's where you help them grow. But don't don't stifle what they're good at. Everybody's good at something different. Yeah, and that's the thing, like, with, with, with all the goalkeepers we've had in Seattle, it's like I've, I've never pulled up a video and say, oh, you got to be like him. No, you got to be yourself. Yeah. You know, now this is the training session we're doing. Look how he's doing it. But I don't, I don't say, well, you have to be like him. Right. That, that's just, that just doesn't work. But a lot of, a lot of people do that. They do that with their academy kids, and they all the way down. So. Yeah. Omar. 
Is I know. Everybody you've been patient. Like you've been patient. You, Omar? You've been patiently <laughs> waiting. I, I apologize. Does everybody have to be like you, Omar? <laughs> <laughs> no, no. But I think uh, I think we can. I don't know. I ho- hope everybody understands what I'm trying to say here. But I, I've had this kind of like realization in uh, one of my sessions recently of, you know, when you try and do a lot of volume in a session and you want to try and do that very rarely when you do high volume and a lot of reps, are you having the goalkeepers go through major movements? And I kind of, you know, again, through Mike having conversations with Mike and other people who have watched my sessions, I realized like there are a lot of like dull moments in goalkeeping sparked right away by an intense moment. And if I only uh, train the intense moments, my goalkeepers will always be sharp for in the session. But in the game, when there's moments where the the game's nothing's happening, the center back has the ball, they kind of check out for a second. Then that ball gets to the top they don't have the capability or, you know, to go in the memory bank of what's that transition moment. Like Uh coach has only shown me what's happening from the 18 down. So I think again, whether it's long lines in sessions or, you know, coaches who have, you know, 10, 15 kids at a time, they need to get those kids reps. So they're not doing those big transition moments. So I think I had that like moment of realization, like, okay, yes, sometimes the sessions are going to be boring. Yes. I need to have these Uh movements, you know, illustrated in the beginning of the session, but there's going to be moments where in a game you are on top of the 18. It may look weird because I don't have the lines drawn out at a park, but I'm going to have you recover 20 yards back to your goal. And then the play will start. And I think I've had that again, kind of to force myself out of the high volume and show the parents that, you know, they're getting a lot of work to more of, okay, now these kids know exactly what they're supposed to do when they're transitioning 20, 30 yards out of their goal back to their line. And then from there, as the play develops, they're turning their mind on and off. So I think, I don't know if, if, if you guys have ever had that realization or no, no, absolutely, absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, and I had to say it today. I mean, we have a game tomorrow against BYU and we're doing, I was doing like crosses and, and shots from outside the 18 because BYU likes to shoot from outside the 18. And for some reason, like every, I had to stop and be like, guys, this isn't fitness. Like I was like, take your time. Like it's one, two, three. Nobody told you you had to transition fast in between you have distribution. Like take your time, reset yourself. Because one of the hardest things hands down in goalkeeping is being in that lull. And it could be for 89 minutes. And then all of a sudden, bam, having to make the big save, having to be on point, having to like all of a sudden chaos. That is one of, that is absolutely hands down one of the hardest things. And if goalkeeping was rapid fire all the time, <laughs> there'd be a lot of great goalkeepers out there, but it's not. It's no. absolutely not. And so if all you train is chaos and rapid fire all the time, you your goalkeeper isn't going to know how to s- turn that switch on like when they need to. And I agree with you, Omar. Yeah, they're going to be yeah. boring things, but goalkeeping is boring if you have a good team. <laughs> so... <laughs> I mean, my God, my gosh, man. I mean, you've, you've had some years in, in, in Seattle, Tom, where, you know, I mean, Stefan, Stefan could be in one of those situations where like, you know, the announcer's like, Oh, not a lot going on for him right there whatsoever. <laughs> not a lot going on for Imagine him. Imagine playing for the U S national team. Yeah. 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 I mean, I honestly, as a goalkeeper, I think we can all say, uh, at least for me is like, if I didn't have a lot to do in a game as a goalkeeper, I got, I, I was like, I was getting on edge. But the worst part is being a goalkeeper coach and knowing that your goalkeeper hasn't had any work to do. Now you're really on edge. Yeah. I'm like, oh my goodness, let's go, let's go. Can you just come for a cross? You know, something. Uh, yeah, yeah, like so, just touch the ball. Yeah, touch something. Something. Yeah, exactly. And um, but again, I mean, we're, you, we're, we're <laughs> the best goalkeepers I've ever been around are the ones who are just, I mean, get get past a bad mistake and and make a save. I mean, the best I've ever been around. There's been so many guys, but like Keller was like that. He wouldn't have anything to do. Then he could pull off a save. Like you just like, wow, he had nothing to do. And he does that. Yeah. That's the save, you know? Yeah. No, I agree. And I think that I'm going to go back on this. Like, I think that that's what impressed me so much about Lauren um, in that, uh, that Pepperdine game was she didn't have all that much to do until like mid 60 minutes left and 60 minutes into the game. And then like, you know, she has to come up with an outstretched save to the, you know, far post and to be able to stay focused and be able to do that. And, and, and just to grab that momentum back, which took the air out of them, you know, that ball goes in, you know, it's three to one, but they're like, we have momentum. Let's go, go, go. It changed. It's those change the game. And it takes certain players to be able to stay focused and do that. And, and it is something it's hard to train that 
but it is something that you have to do. No, that's one of the most frustrating things for me is that, you know, as we're talking about footwork today and we're kind of, but sometimes after a game, well, he didn't have a lot to do. Well, he had three saves, came up with three crosses. He was good with his feet. Um, you know, well, he didn't have a lot to do, but yet I'm looking at it from, well, his footwork was good today. Yep. He was clean of what he was supposed to do. And as you're going, well, actually he had a lot more than you think he did, you know? Yeah. yeah. I, I want to bring up this clip right now um, of the other Stefan, uh, Cleveland, uh, actually right now. And, you know, we've kind of been talking about like, you know, mundane, the, the mun- mundaneness and, you know, kind of being, being ready and also just not ma- making a meal out of anything right here. So I just kind of want to play this play through basically. Uh, it's, it's pretty simple. Essentially what's happened is slight deflection and it's just a simple shuffle back across reversing direction. And there again, to the untrained eye, that looks like nothing. Um, I want to play it one more time so everyone can kind of see it. Boom. Recover there. But Tom, how many times have you seen that at the youth level? Uh, that, 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 that becomes a meal, that becomes a meal. So Omar, do you want to do a little play-by-play of this? Since I know you love doing that. I mean, you, you tried the play-by-play. It wasn't, it wasn't too great, but, uh, uh-huh. it was a shot from, <laughs> no, it was a it's, it's striker is, uh, it looks, like, it, looks, it looks like a transition moment here and everyone's recovering shot from about 25 yards out. And it hits one of the defenders in the, uh, the leg and the goalkeeper was going one way and had to reverse course go in the opposite way. And yeah, kept his feet underneath him uh-huh. pretty well. Yeah. Yeah. I think another good point about this is um, his positioning. I think that from that shot, from being from 25 yards out, he's on his line. Sometimes it's okay to be on your line because it gives you more time to make that adjustment. If if you're kind of off your line and stuff like that, a redirection might be too quick and it might beat you a pace. I think we saw that when we were um, going over some clips, I think like a year ago about sometimes giving yourself a little distance it was ashlyn harris um sometimes giving yourself a little bit of distance to make an adjustment is okay you know a lot of people are like oh you got to be up you got to be off your line but sometimes that that you know you can be beat with pace um not that that's the situation here but i think that because he was so far on his line he could make up and get his feet under him and move across yeah, I agree with that. I, I, I'm more of an online goalkeeper and goal, or goalkeeper coach as well. Um, you know, Cleveland's funny. That's a funny one you showed me about Cleveland because you're talking about, you know, the pandemic and everything else. I've never seen a, a, a goalkeeper grow so much without training because we did so much film during the pandemic of footwork and technique. And it was fun kind of seeing that clip of him because he's improved immensely. He just, you know, nobody's seen him play. Tom, yeah. Tom, quick question for you. I mean, how, how much do you think – training in the gym and building the quads and the hamstrings and even the core strength and stability how much do you think that has helped uh, these professional goalkeepers I know a lot of young kids listening don't really have a plan they're still relatively young and, and naive I mean go on YouTube you can find a lot of stuff about stability and balance but how important do you think for the younger generation it is to create even if they don't create it for themselves go out and seek information about it I still think for goalkeepers you need to have strong hips core and shoulders those are the, the I think those should be the pillars um, and then obviously along with that, you know, working on your mobility is massively important, but I think those three things are the, is what I look at for goalkeepers is what I work with our strength coaches. If I see there's a problem with a goalkeeper in one of those areas, we address it right away. Um, we've got a great staff that's worked with our guys, uh, with hip mobility, but also just strength in the hips and core, uh, it's part of their daily routine. Mm-hmm. Now for kids, you know, there's a ton of information out there. And, and, but those are the three things I think you need to make sure that you're strong in as a goalkeeper. Yeah. I think that you have to make sure that any sort of training back in the day, um, when we used to train in the gym, it was all like clean and jerks and, and like stuff like that. And honestly, you know, yes, that, that helps your, I don't know what it helps. Basically, it, like it helps, helps your, your Olympic, ver- it helps, it helps your, your vertical Olympic and stuff, and my strength. But at the same time, like you have to be careful the way you train in a gym, so you're not bulking up and slowing yourself down. You have to be quick and agile as a goalkeeper. You want the strength, you want everything. But I agree with you; it's got to come from core, hips, mm. upper body, shoulders. It's not so like you know. So you've got to be careful the way you're training and especially young kids, you know, you, you know, don't start too early in the gym with weights and stuff like that as well. Cause you're still developing. Yeah. That's a great point. I think too, with young kids look at different goalkeepers and what do you want to look like and everything else? Because 
I don't know if you guys ever seen like De Gea live. Have you, has anybody seen him live? Like he is so small, but he's so agile and so quick. So that's one type of goalkeeper. Right. You know, there's another type of goalkeeper could be like, could be like a Neuer's big and strong and everything else. But we're, again, we're still going back. We're all different shapes and sizes as goalkeepers. Where you yeah. don't try to fit one type of goalkeeper and then go down that, that, whole, that just, I have to be just like that goalkeeper. Right. Oh, we're all different. I mean, my kids are different, you know? So yeah. And your body's going to react different. Everybody's body's going to react differently to the gym work, period. Number one, if it like my body puts on muscle really easily, that's just my body makeup. Like, so I can't do the same thing that another goalkeeper can do in the gym because I'll get bulky. That person might lean out. So it's, it's not cut and dry at all. Exactly. Yeah. Now I, I know that Omar, you know, back in his college days, he did a lot of work on, on the leg machines, uh, mainly because there's a 24 hour fitness, uh, <laughs> pro, uh br- brochure with Omar doing race. Stop it. Oh, there is. There I'm, is. Yeah. My, not 24 hour fitness. My, my friend, my friend needed, I needed a model. So I took some pictures for him at the, uh, the school gym, I love but, it. I want to see this. <laughs> but Tom, to your, to your point, I think again, um, you look at goalkeepers like Neuer, Ter Stegen, I mean, pretty much any German goalkeeper, their flexibility is unbelievable. So it's not like they just woke up one day, they did, they did some stretches, and they're able to get down to the ground. And you can see uh, Ter Stegen, how well he, you know, he sits in such a deep position, but how powerful he is to go to the ground and how powerful he is getting out of that low position to a high position. So I think flexibility is one of those huge ones, too, that you don't even need to, you don't even need to go to the gym. You could just go at your house, get some bands maybe, do some stretching, and then eventually, I tell kids all the time, like, learn to live in that position where your legs are uncomfortable and burning because once you live there throughout a whole play, a whole sequence, whether it's 10 seconds, 15 seconds, you're going to be able to transition from one side of the goal without getting bored. Cause you're always going to be able to live in that position without your legs going, Oh crap. Uh, we need a break here. And then you, you tone out for a half second to get a break. And then on that half second, something happens. Yeah. It's a great point. Yeah. You know, it, it's funny. So I want to, I want to bring this up right now. Um, if, uh, if, if cool right now here, um, so it's funny you brought up the, the, the flexibility thing, uh, Omar, because I found this, this clip of Stefan uh, against Dallas. Uh, I think Cervania hits this ball, and I don't know if you remember this play, uh, Tom. It sounds like you have a memory of an elephant, so you probably do. Um, but essentially what happens is uh, the ball's hit from outside the 18. It takes a pretty wicked deflection. But look at, look at, look at his shape right there, and then the flexibility as the ball takes that deflection. It's that full stretch, and then the coverage, honestly, to steer that, Boom! Right there. I, I think that's he has the he has the best. Bo- he honestly, I think he has oh the best gosh. bottom hand, left hand. I think in the entire game. I mean, every save he's made, whether it's the Ooh, save against Altador or the save in the final uh, that you guys lost, unfortunately, bottom hand. I mean, the guy just knows what to do. And I always tell kids when you come across the goal and you realize the striker say uh, coming down the their right side and getting a strike with their right foot across you, load your bottom hand and have that hand ready to go. And this, he does it better than anybody. Yeah, he's in a good position. I mean, I'm just, I'm studying that right now. I'm looking and mm-hmm. honestly, for me, I'm like, gosh, why is his right leg starting to come in there a little bit too quick? But uh, uh, yeah, I mean, he's- You're so funny. You're just like me. Yeah, I'm just looking <laughs> at him, like technical. his body I'm shape. Like, his head is steady. I love, I love his body shape there. His head's steady. I like his hand shape. And then his right leg starts to come in a little bit. So I don't know what, what's, and then, you know, and then the last part of it is, is like, why are we defending so deep? But yes, you're, you're, oh, you're right. He's, <laughs> his, change, his change of direction is fantastic. I mean, he's, but the guy trains so dang hard, man. I mean, he just, he deserves every compliment he ever gets. I also think that the nice thing on this and for young kids watching and stuff like that, on the initial shot, because of the distance it out, he doesn't bite. Like yeah, he kind of, exactly. he kind of takes a, a bit of a pause. So he's not committing to that that initial strike of the ball because of the amount of players that are in between him and the ball like he kind of he takes a pause and so it allows him because that's coming across so technically had he bit to the right like he wouldn't have made the lower hands he holds yeah i think he holds you know and i think that's awesome because it allows him to keep his shape and come back to the near post yeah, even in, even in training, he's, you, you'll very rarely will you see him leaning, right. leaning, you know, and everything else. He's really, really steady that way. He's worked so hard at that. I mean, there was, God, we, we worked on so much body shape when he first came to us, and um, you see it in that play. And then I'm, like, looking at it, and I'm like, wow, he's got his leg bowed a little bit, but yeah. Yeah, no, he, yeah. 
Uh, oh, oh, question. Omar, how did I how did I do on the play by play? Is it okay? Uh, there's still work to be done. I'll call you later. Okay. Uh, but Tom, <laughs> Tom, quick question. Uh, you know Chris Sharp from the Rapids. One of the things we were talking about from like angle strikes. Uh, he kept telling me he's like, you know, the new thing or goalkeepers should try and create depth. In this situation, like Sasa said creating depth by not stepping and following the ball. Sometimes that ball gets played in a negative position. Goalkeepers automatically go, well, I got to step up. So he plays that ball almost lateral, but slightly negative. Instead of coming off the post and stepping towards the ball, he maintains his, his distance. I mean, do you guys train depth? Is that a word you guys throw around? We don't use that as much as, as my big thing is, what are you gaining by stepping high? Right. What are you gaining you might gain something, but I, but I always argue you're losing a little bit more than you think. Certain goalkeepers can step high and then get away with it. I, I, I get it. But for me, with our goalkeepers, I've always liked them to be more, drop back on their line a little bit more, and make the shooter earn it as well. Make them earn it. They, if he hit a far post and side netting, okay. But let's make them earn it. Let's not give it to them either yeah. because we're gaining one part of it versus the other. So I've always – I've always been that way. Um, it's not something new for me. I've always kind of had our goalkeepers, um, you know, back on their line a little bit. Uh, some people say, well, are you an offline goalkeeper coach on the line? I'm like, actually, I take the strength of what the goalkeeper is. Yeah. Um, during the course of play, it's totally different. I think you, you, you narrated the shot perfectly. It's 25 yards out. Why are we stepping there? Right. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Like, yeah, I mean, I think that if I were to take it, I'd say right now, Lauren is a great offline goalkeeper. I mean, her, 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 her reaction, everything, she's not going to get bit, beat with speed very often and stuff. But if I take Adalia and if I take Hannah, then they need to be more on their line. They need that extra, that extra split second to, to get their feet under them, maybe scramble a little bit, maybe, maybe get an extra step in to, to cover that ground um, to make up for the speed. And I, and it, it is individual, um, as well what are you gaining like that's 25 yards out why why would you step yeah. you know why would you step like i think yeah <laughs> so, i think but, um so let's go, sorry. no go ahead no i think again that's that's a really good uh a, a good video if you guys wanted to watch is everton versus man U. you see olsen got bruno fernandez from like 25 it was a good shot from like 25 yards out but when that ball gets played negative olsen steps just a little bit and that ball gets right over his head. And a goalkeeper, mm-hmm. he's like 6'4", 6'5", from that position, in my opinion, should not be getting beat there. So, I don't know. It, it, was, a, it was a weird goal. It did that a perfect time. was going, you know, across the goal far post. But at the same time, I just feel like maybe if he had a little bit more depth, he has a little bit Absolutely. more time to see that, see that ball dip and come down. So, Absolutely. And, and, and it, it definitely depends on the, the distance from the ball. Like, you have people that are so used to being off their line and stuff and give yourself the depth you know you are going to get beat and and you'd be amazed like you might be like oh well that ball went into the upper far far corner but give yourself more depth and you're going to pull that say you might be able to pull that save out and i will say one last sorry like one last thing on the depth conversation any young goalkeeper young goalkeeper coach go watch Rui patricio play and if you guys just if you watch him play I mean, the guy hugs his line like I've never seen before. I think, you know, again, we talk about uh, Uruguay versus Portugal, the goal that Cavani scored. He's like literally on his line. And if he was just a little bit further out, maybe he gets that ball curling away from him. He has a better angle. And even the goal he concedes against Man U, I think a year or two back, he's hugging his line and that ball has so much time to travel and exactly. beat him across. So you have to find that happy medium. And we yeah. talk about it too. Being able to find the final action and your positioning in that final action anybody not anybody but most people who are you know have played goalkeeper enough they understand that they know how to do it yeah. but when you're trans the transition moment when you're transitioning from point a to point b and if that's more than five yards that's when you find the best goalkeepers like buffon who excel at that yeah. they know exactly where they are because that first glance and then the first movement that's got to be the best best movement possible because if you're constantly quickly quick, uh, quickly looking and like Sasha says take you got to keep your eyes on the ball just in case any variable changes but if you're going constantly trying to reconfigure and find the data points over and over you're going to be lost because you're going to be a second late so that first movement's got to be the best but I think we need to train in my opinion for me and other coaches young coaches train those kids moving from like five to ten yards and I promise you you're going to see them not struggle but you're going to see them a lot more uh you struggle a little bit more in my opinion I also, I'd also like to say on that, I, I would rather have you have depth and then that striker head up, go to strike the ball, knowing the depth that you had, 
And then when that head goes down and that strike happens, then you, you preset and take a step like if you want, because if you're already out too far, like we totally got off topic, but if you're already out too far and that striker puts their head up, they, then their options are different, right? So if you, you have your depth and that striker knows you have the depth, they're not going high. They're not trying to dip the ball over top of you. Now it's a different strike that they're going to hit. And we're talking at an upper level, but you know, that's when you, you're manipulating the situation by your positioning. But if you're already out, what are you going to do? Back up? Right. <laughs> That's the last thing you should do. Yeah. Yeah. Um, wa watch this. Okay. I'm going to try to bring, bring everything all full circle. Okay. okay. Let's, see if I can, <laughs> let's see if I can do this. Okay. This is, this is next level uh, transition here, Omar. Let's see if it works. Okay. So, um, you know, so getting us back on topic here, check this out. Okay. So what you were just referring to in regards to creating depth, I think there's a couple things. One is, is first off is that young goalkeeper coaches out there, you need to create more variety in your sessions. Okay. The only way to make a realism is to provide the goalkeepers with various different situations through your session design. That's going to allow them to problem solve and figure out when they create depth, when they step up, because as we all know, it's easier to reverse direction in a negative situation when you have depth. Boom. Did I do it? Let's see. Okay. Nobody's saying anything. Maybe I did not. Oh no, there's just so much going on behind me. I'm on mute. Okay. <laughs> no, but I, yeah. And I think, and that's, and that, I think if, if people say, Hey, you know, you guys are getting off topic, that just shows you how many layers there are to one single play. And I think Tom, you just even watching Stefan's uh, play right there. And then, you know, his leg caving in, that's something that again, when you watch, when you watch film, you're only you sometimes get people get caught ball watching, but when you watch that, I didn't even notice that. So now I'm watching and I'm like, that's another layer of, of something that I can look into. So I don't know what, again, I'm going to ask you, Tom, I mean, we all watch film with our goalkeepers and I've done it in the past too, but like, what is a film session with you look like? Are you over critical? Are there days to be over critical? Like, what do you do? Um, if I'm over critical with a goalkeeper, it will just be myself and the goalkeeper one-on-one. -on -one. Uh, we will do film session with everybody involved. I want everybody's input. So it might be, yeah, Fry's playing, but I want everyone's input. I want to hear from them because I also want to learn as well. It's not like my set of eyes are the right eyes or the correct eyes. So I want to learn from those guys and hear from them. We will look at sessions together. And again, I'll ask questions because I want to hear from them um, and just learn a little bit for what, what they might see. And then I'll also do films individual. I'm, I'm big into film. I mean, film is a, is a big part of what, you know, what we all do. And I always tell a story when, when my wife and I got married and we didn't have a film guy, we got some money for our wedding. I bought a camera and I filmed my sessions. <laughs> and it. so, you know, I, I had, I was like, okay, wait a minute. And, and, and uh, that's what I, and so I didn't film, I believe in all that. And, and sometimes, you know, again, we have so many different angles. We look at everything else and all of a sudden I'm looking at the game and why were we doing that? I'm like, well, you know, it looks pretty easy when I have it on panoramic behind the goal of this and that, mm -hmm. but the emotion part of it has to come into it as well. Absolutely. And I think that's why it's good to do it one-on-one -on -one and talk to the player because what, what were they feeling? What was going on? What were they seeing from literally inside that six or inside that 18? Like, oh, look at that. Tied that in inside the 18. Um, but, <laughs> but I, I absolutely but agree with that. Yeah. Because what, yeah, I get asked all the time, well, why does yeah. he, why, why don't they play this ball? I'm like, well, we're in the 72nd minute, you know, and, and right now they don't feel comfortable playing. Well, they should have the confidence. Well, I understand they should have the confidence. And we but what's get going on? Yeah. But I'm not there in that game now. I'm on the sidelines. Exactly. But we've trained it all week, but I don't take it personal. You know, it's, yeah. it's the position. Tom, 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 what I'll say too is if you, you and your wife ever renew your vows, invite me to the party. I'll get you a GoPro and you can have it behind the goal. You should never have bought that, that camera. I got to reimburse you for that. Well, if the, if the drone's working, he can do a drone shot for you. <laughs> oh, I crashed, I crashed the drone into the ground you recently. Crashed so. the drone? Wait, what? You I, don't to, I don't know how to fly that thing. I've been working on it, but it's, it's hard. <laughs> I love drone footage for our goalkeepers. Well, apparently Omar's not getting any. Tom, to, <laughs> Tom, to, give, to give you context to this, Saskia gave Omar a drone from UCLA. To no, it wasn't for from UCLA. It wasn't from UCLA. Oh, no, okay, it was okay, my okay. drone. Oh, it was your drone. Okay. <laughs> not anymore. <laughs> yeah, no, I think, yeah. 
And I think that's, that's honestly, I've been, I went through yesterday, someone sent me their college film and then I went through like YouTube uh, binge of different college tapes and how many how, there's honestly, there's Ugh. kids who literally just set up a GoPro behind their goal. Yeah. And I'm like, why would anybody ever not film from this position? You can see everything. I watched a young girl who was like 13 years old. I don't know how she's had a college tape already, but I'm watching her and there's like a shot that's being hit from the 18. And I had like, I was just getting anxiety because I'm literally, I feel like I'm in first person <laughs> watching her get this shot. And she's, you know, she catches the ball, you know, she's catching the ball at the highest point, but I'm also like, man, I, I literally feel as if I'm in her position. So you can't only imagine how important that is for her to watch that film and go, damn, okay, that, I was probably uh -huh. too narrow here. I was too high or too low. It's just, it's everything from behind the goal. Yeah, yeah. that's how I usually have uh, our, our videographer set up. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> yeah. Or something else, something else you wanted to bring up? Uh, yeah, I mean, uh, I, haven't, I haven't brought it up just yet, but I will right now. I'm going to watch, or uh, watch. I'm going to show the Stefan Fry save uh, against Altidore. And mm. Tom, please, we want to get your perspective on it, play to play. What were you thinking? What were the emotions? Did oh, you go to the never, bathroom by accident? He's never seen or this replayed. This, this is definitely not something he's ever I, seen. I, I, I tell the story about. all the time is, uh, and you guys remember the game, and you guys, uh, that he was already having a good game. He was already having a good game. The field was frozen because MLS says we have to water the field before every MLS game. And, and so he didn't have the best warm up. He had his beard. I'm like, just wipe your gloves on your beard. Let's go. Let's go. You know, and, and uh, but he was having a good game. He was having a good game. If you remember that game, go back. He was having a good game. And so I felt like, yeah, it was in rhythm. And again, when he made that save, the person I looked back to was our admin. And I said, wow, what a great save. And everybody's going crazy. Uh, but I've seen it in training. You know, you can see our center back right there. He goes down and he's like, I think he's so surprised. Even he said, Roman said, I was so surprised he got there. Oh, I wish the, it could go in regular the speed. Lift, yeah, the lift of that of that that altitude. Maybe you should have found it on Y oh Scout, Omar. You know, you should have done it on Y Scout. You know. Oh, that's uh, probably better. Yeah, my Wi-Fi is not great. Yeah, this this is this is a little this is a little. Rough. But I love that he came across. <laughs> but look at his shoulders and his set position. So he comes across set yeah. shoulders, change direction, yeah. boom. Yeah. You know, he's look at his head, his head, see his head. This is what I'm talking about. Watch his head. His head has already turned to see where that ball is going to land. So he is set. Watch his head. Balls hit, heads turned, set back the other way. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. I mean, it was, it was, I was so, so happy for him for all the hard work he's put in. I mean, he's such a good dude. Such a good dude. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. He's such a good guy. But again, I've seen him in training sessions. So that's why I wasn't, I was, I was, on the on the, I was like, oh, okay. Yeah, don't you love that? Like when they do something, and, like the coaches are like, whoa, and you're just like, yeah. Yeah, I mean, you've seen <laughs> well, it before, course. and um, you know, yeah, that was that was fantastic for sure. Right on. Funniest thing with with Stefan is like, uh, first time I ever saw Stefan, I think he was like 15 or 16 years old at De La Salle. Mm. Um, yeah, because I'm uh, his Nate Failing was his goalkeeper coach, um, who's up in up in Cal North. He was Nate. at UC Santa Barbara. Yeah, Nate. He was uh. Mm -hmm. He was uh, the Dale Sal coach uh, back when he was starting out his uh, his coaching career, and it's so funny because I'm like, wow, I was like, I'm like, do you ever do you ever talk to Stefan? Do you ever talk to Stefan about uh, you know your sessions? Then he's like, he's like, I really hope not. He's like, I was not a good goalkeeper. <laughs> I really, really hope he doesn't discuss my sessions from from uh, from back then. But uh, but he was such a nice kid, and then I ran into him again when he was uh, when he was playing uh, PDL now USL two while he was at Cal. And uh, the one thing that I, I recognized from him uh, that I knew that he was going to be a, a you know, standout once he got to MLS was that it, it literally, it took at the college level, um, the really the only way that he could get, get beat was in a three goal situation. Um, and, and then that, I mean, and that was, and that was literally, and, that, and it, you had to have really been able to create a gap that he was not going to be able to get there in time because at, at the college level, he was just unstoppable in the Pac-12, which I think was the 10, Pac-10 at the time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Dude was unreal. I yeah. watched him yeah. against UCLA, and I remember I was I was standing in the uh, little by the track on the gate, and I was watching this guy warm drink. up, and I saw him like I see, yeah I saw him make a save, and I was just like, holy crap! If that's what the Pac-10 looks like, I'm I can't, I'm not I I'm no. Nah. It was like a very like <laughs> I was like in awe because he's older, and I'm watching an older goalkeeper, and I always just I just like I like to follow those careers, and then I saw him make a save that was like on the on the goal line, and I was just thinking this dude's a beast of a human being. And if that's the, if that's what I have to look like to get to the next level, I don't know if I want to go through the work. And it just, man, that, that's when I knew I wasn't going to UCLA. I'm like, man, I'm not, I'm not cut, I'm not cut <laughs> out for this stuff. No, I mean, I do physically. I, I mean, I, yeah. 
what does that say about the Big West that you were Big West goalkeeper of the year? What does that what does that say, Omar? No, I got I got in shape, but we weren't playing the same people. <laughs> well, I mean, you had I got your away. Epiphany. You changed I did, everything. Yeah. You stopped eating your cheeseburgers and all that <laughs> stuff. And... Oh, yeah. oh my god. Yeah. Uh, I I'm, I think I'm I'm in I'm in better shape now physically as as a coach than I was as a player. <laughs> Cause I know so much more. Cause you know, nowadays when you have, a, when you have a, a, I have my own podcast too. And on here, people will literally like, Hey, can you answer this question about fitness? Can you answer this question about core strength? And I'm like, man, I don't know a thing or two. So I'm watching it on YouTube and I'm realizing there are people who post so much great content and I'm just getting lost. And I'm like, man, if only I had been this curious about this stuff when I was playing, I may have been able to, you know, go a little further, but it was just, it's just so much information out there. There's no excuse. Omar. Yeah, yeah, I yeah. did that. Oh, yeah, I, dude, I went to. Uh, I, I went to the Pan out, when yeah. I won a World Cup. I'm just telling you. <laughs> yeah, Sas, but look at that picture behind you right there. I can see. I can see the bicep <laughs> through the shirt. <laughs> I can show that the lower one down there, the, the bodybuilding <laughs> one. <laughs> Jeez. Oh, oh my. Oh my gosh. That's a. <laughs> That's, yeah. that's, a, that's incredible. Tom, I don't, I don't know about you, but my, uh, <laughs> my foot skills are so much better now that I'm a coach than they were when I was actually a player. Absolutely. Uh, yeah, my foot skills are so much better now. Gosh. Yeah, you hit a lot of balls. Being a goal Absolutely. <laughs> you do, oh, man. Oh, man. <laughs> well, well, we've been going for a while. Tom, honestly, thanks thanks for taking all the time, man. I, I really appreciate it. Like, you, you've been one of those guests that, you know, it's crazy, man, because, like, uh, you know, you're, you're not a social media guy and stuff like that. And so I was like, does he even want to do the show? Like, I don't know how. I don't know how to. How do I get a hold of this guy? Like, you know, do I <laughs> smoke signals? How do I do this? send a telegraph like i'm not sure um but but we honestly really i mean we would love to have you i think i mean i'm speaking for everybody i'm sure we would love to have you back back on the show and and once the world opens back up i think uh i think omar's going to get his first uh plane ticket to us to seattle to to watch one of those sessions for sure Uh, for sure i i have houston on my list first it's houston colorado and seattle's next what (laughs) why would you say that because I want him to know that he's the last person on my tour. It's my, fa- my oh, farewell. Okay. I just thought they were like, it was like you were saying, I have to no, go to I've, these I've other already, places I've already, I've already made my commitments. I've already made my commitments. Oh my <laughs> always welcome everyone. Always welcome. And uh, this has been a lot of fun for me. I mean, it's, uh, I, we've been spending so much time lately talking about tactics and the way we're playing. And I just want to talk about goalkeeping. And I'm so excited this year because we're bringing in another new goalkeeper. And I love working with the guys. I love what I do. And um, I have such a passion for it. it. It's like I think about my family and the goalkeepers. That's how I think. That's how my life goes. How many do you have coming into camp this, this year? I'll have four. We signed a new one. We're loaning one goalkeeper out. Um, I'll have four, maybe five. But right now it's tough because we're going to be in a bubble again. You know, oh. so we're going to be in bubble. So we can't just bring anybody in and we, and we drafted a goalkeeper as well. And so we would like to bring him in, but I also, I want him to be able to play his college season. So he might come in after the start of preseason. And so that's a whole new, you know, so I'm really excited about the guys we have this year. And, and I'm all in, you know, for me, the goalkeepers is not about the number one. It's about the entire group. All absolutely. Group. Yeah, absolutely. Tyler, Spencer Richie, Mike. Spencer oh, no, Richie made his move 100%. back. Yeah. Oh, that's right. Spence is there. Shout out to Spence. Love yeah. Spence. Yeah. That's right. Washington's yeah. born and bred. Yeah, world. yeah, exactly. So uh, really excited about him. And you showed Cleveland earlier and, uh, you know, obviously Fry. And then we have Trey Muse going out on loan. And um, but excited about the group coming in for sure. Sweet. Yeah. Um, well, 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 Tom, honestly, um, you know, if, if anybody out there, like they want to connect with you, I know obviously social media is not your thing. Um, but is there, if, if, if anybody like, let's say, um, you know, they're looking for advice, maybe they're a young goalkeeper coach or whatever, like how's the best way for people to connect with you if, if they want to, they want to learn a little bit more. Yeah, I'm open. Just email me. Okay. Just email me. I just, um, I'm open. I, I, you know, so yeah. Okay. Old awesome. School. Yeah, old, exactly. old, 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 keep it old simple. Video. I got to keep everything yeah. simple. Say our goalkeepers, keep it simple. <laughs> and obviously, guys, if uh, if you want to not keep it simple and you want to see 17 different angles and 45 uh, 45 minutes worth of breakdown of goalkeeper sessions, uh, go to Omar Zini's at Pro GK Academy underscore <laughs> on Instagram. Uh, you can reach out to Saskia Weber at Saskia underscore Weber. Uh, I know with the with the season coming up, you're probably going to start posting a heck of a lot more stuff uh, now that you're um, finally. Yeah. Yeah, finally yeah, you, you know how I'll, it is and you know if you're just looking to connect with Shannon if I accept you with a friend <laughs> uh, um, then you can find her on my um, Facebook as well <laughs> uh, we'll, we'll, we'll let all the coaches in the Bundesliga know that <laughs> <laughs> oh 
<laughs> and guys, obviously, guest suggestion, topic suggestion, uh, contact at inside the 18. That's the number 18 media.com or at goalkeeper podcast on all social media platforms. If you want to, by the way, guys, for those of you guys who've reached out and said there's no goalkeeping stuff on my personal stuff, that's why we have the goalkeeper podcast social media <laughs> stuff. My personal stuff is not goalkeeping. That's why that's where Omar posts pictures of himself uh, doing stuff in the weight room. That's where in his his personal personal ones right there. Uh, no, at Michael Magid for all comedy stuff. That's all the time on Inside the 18, and we are out later, guys. Yeah!